Hi everyone, welcome back to episode four of the Lathe and Loom podcast. My name is Cher and this podcast is uh, all about my journey through the fiber arts. Today we're going to have a little bit of knitting, uh, some spinning content, a little bit of acquisitions. I'm going to talk about uh, some of my projects on my circular sock machine. And uh, on the spinning segment, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I'm doing with um, Vertour de Fleece. Um, so I'd like to uh, start off by welcoming you if this is the first time uh, that you've watched the podcast. And if you've made it through all four episodes or all three previous episodes into the fourth, um, thank you so much for coming back. If you like what you're watching, um, I would invite you to please subscribe and share if you're on social media that, uh, and if you wouldn't mind leaving me a comment to let me know what uh, content you really like, what you might like to see more of, or uh, any other feedback that you might have. I'm really, really grateful to try to um, have a little bit of sense of community as well as to uh, spread the um, channel uh, subscription rate a little bit would be awesome. I would really appreciate it. So um, awesomely, and you've probably seen this if you're following me on Instagram, um, is the um, Wild Bees socks are off the needles. So this is the pattern that I started uh, at the beach uh, this um, uh, back in May. And it's a pattern uh, in the Handmade Sock Society season four uh, by the designer Helen Stewart. So I'll have all that information in the notes below as well as everything that I talk about uh, throughout the podcast, um, shops um, that I mention, um, yarn details, pattern links, etc., are all in the uh, show notes below. I try to be really comprehensive about that, so I would invite you to uh, take a look at that later and particularly um, would be appreciate if you would check out some of the shops that I mentioned. That would be great. So I did knit these. I actually started with a size large to give me a little extra calf room and then went down to the medium so they look a little slouchy on my sock blockers but they just knit up beautifully this yarn uh, is um, by rich hill yarns out from richmond virginia it's available at the dances with wool uh, which is my local yarn shop in richmond and i want to see if i can twist this around you can see a little bit this detail of the bees what is just absolutely beautiful um the pattern was probably one of the most fun uh patterns that i have knit um uh to date i it's um i mean you do have to follow the chart but it's it's quick it's like a glance hitch a row it's a glance hitch a row so um and then of course the back is just in stockinette i struggled with the difference between make one left, make one right with a slip slip knit or a, um, well, just make one right <laughs> or, or knit two together, which is the make one left. And there's something about the way that the um, patterning falls out uh, in this um, sock that that all of a sudden became crystal clear to me. So um, if you're struggling with that, that's kind of just a side bonus of getting to have a knit and have a beautiful uh, pair of socks uh, off the needle as well. Um, so that is it really for my knitting um, finished objects. I do have some um, spin objects and we'll kind of do that all together in the spinning segment. Uh, as you know, the last pet podcast, I had just barely cast on the Comfort Fade Cardi. Um, I, this is a pattern by Andrea Mowry. Um, I had bought the yarn back in May of 2020 at Black Mountain Yarn Shop in Black Mountain, North Carolina. Um, predominantly, um, wow, I'm forgetting what yarn I'm using. That's terrible. Predominantly, it is, um, oh, it's um, Fruvalborg. So I'll give you a little... Uh, so it's three skeins of Fru Valborg in uh, Dahlia, Ramshackle, and Belize. And then there is one skein, the darkest is a, is a Life in the Long Grass. 
um, I don't have that colorway uh, in front of me, so, um, but the, it is in the show notes below. So I'm on the, this is the back, you know, the shoulder section, if you will, right? Um, and have just done that first fade section, moving from the dahlia uh, into the ramshackle. Really loving how it's all knit, uh, coming together. Um, in episodes two and three, I think I showed the swatch of the three, so I won't show that again, but if you, you can certainly refer back there, that would be, if you wanna see how that's gonna look up. Um, I really enjoy Andrea Mowry's patterns. Um, it is a knit row and a purl row, so there is a fair amount of purling. I do um, purl, sorry about that, purl Portuguese. So this is my Portuguese uh, knitting pen. I think the link to that shop is also in my show notes below. Um, you just wear it. I wear it kind of up here. I do it opposite of how most people probably do, but um, I find it makes my purling almost as fast as my knitting, so that's um, great for me, and I knit continental. Next on the needles, I have the Knit Nook socks, and I picked this up in Moorhead City at the Knit Nook Yarn Shop. Um, it was a second anniversary colorway. The pattern is designed by Kay Litton. So I am knitting that for summer sock camp. Um, if you're following um, the Crazy Sock Lady, um, that camp is running from June through August. And I thought it would just be kind of fun um, to have that together. So the yarn for this is by Sheep Dip Dye Work. And it's the second anniversary colorway. It was designed to go with this pattern. And really, as noted, I was <laughs> been very involved with the Comfort Fade Cardi, so I'm not terribly far along. Um, although I'm finding I'm having some waiting uh, room time now. So I've just kind of walked through this little toe here. But I love the colorway. I love the, it's gonna be fun, something a little bit different. It's a nice, um, fairly easy pattern, although I'm not quite, I haven't quite memorized it, and it occurred to me today that putting in some stitch markers between the sections on the knitting would probably be helpful. So um, I will keep working on that. I've got the second toe barely cast on. Um, I do my, um, I am knitting the pattern backwards because I, um, although I am with the um, Helen Stewart patterns, I'm trying to knit them by the pattern along with that handmade sock society um and the last so the wild bee socks were um cuffed down which is not my favorite but i did like the outcome of the heel and i liked learning that um but uh, this one i did not want to knit that way so i am a toe up knitter i prefer it i like to be able to try on as i go um so i uh, cast on on a as a magic loop, each toe, I get to the end of the toe and I switch to nine inch circulars and then go knit that way. And I will probably also convert the heel on this pattern to my um, standard um, shadow wrap heel, which is my preferred. It's the one I learned first. Um, I just think it looks really nice. It fits really nice. It's easy to, you don't have to have markers or memory. So, um, so I'm, I really like that. Uh, this pattern is living in my little knit nook, knit nook bag that I picked up. And um, if you refer back to episode three, I talked to you, I've got a little tour of the Knit Nook yarn shop and talk about those bags. You can get them from there um, and you can call, they do shipping, which is really, really nice. So there's just a little shout out and their information is also below. So they're in North, Moorhead City, North Carolina. So if you feel like a beach trip, it's a very cute little town. Um, next, let's see. Next, I'm actually working on a pair of worsted weight socks. Um, my husband picked out this yarn um, when we were at the Knit Nook. And it is by, uh, it is Unique Worsted by Earth Yarns. I may not be pronouncing that correctly. U-R-T-H is made in Turkey. It is self-striping, extra fine, uh, superwash merino. And I have cast on, my husband has a size 14 foot. <laughs> 
So I'm making shorty socks and I've cast on 64 stitches. I've got two needles in this right now because we just did a little try on, but it's working up really nicely. Um, and just giving me another, again, little different weight. These are just plain vanilla socks, round and round and round, just when I don't have the brain power to um, do anything with a pattern or don't have my um, iPad charged, which has my patterns on it primarily. So uh, using that there. So that's just fun, little little side knitting. So that sort of moves us into uh, a little bit now about circular sock knitting. So I do have a circular sock machine that I got last Christmas. It is an Earl Bacher Gerhardt Speedster. Um, and I'm really um, right now trying to find the right gauge that I like on the size cylinder. So it's a little different than hand knitting, wherein you're varying the length of the stitch. The stitch count is consistent on your cylinder. So um, I have two cylinders, I have a 60 cylinder and a 72 cylinder, and I'm trying to really kind of dial in where that is. So I've been practicing. Um, I knit up this, or uh, yeah, knit up this tube, um, which this has now been cut into, it was a 50 gram ball of Cloudborne Fibers Superwash Sock Twist Hand Paints in Berry. And so it was one longer tube, um, would have been like this, I guess, um, that I cut into two pieces. So it was 50 grams, so this is gonna be shorties um, for me. I, um, this is still the waist yarn. I've put toes on. This one I have now put the heel on. And then I actually unraveled just to kind of see what it would be like um, uh, to, just use the yarn itself and not have a contrast. Um, I mean, my goal is not to to hand knit my sock machine socks. I just am not proficient enough with all of them. And I, I thought it would just be a nice way to, I, I can actually do the heel pretty nicely, but I'm having a hard time gauging the length here. So what I'm doing is using the sock tubes um, to get me a better, you know, where I can get a good solid stitch count for each person that I do socks for. So anyway, so I unraveled this top portion um, up here. I just sort of estimated how many rows I wanted to do and then I just knit in a three by one cuff. So um, I'm still finding the stitch a little bit large, but I think they're kind of cute. Um, so for running around the house socks, they'll be, they'll be fine. And we have a very nice variety of feet <laughs> from a size five of my mother up to 14 of my husband. So if they don't fit one person, they're going to fit somebody else, which is a uh, kind of a nice, a nice thing as a, as I'm learning. So I'm working through that with their, with those, those socks. Um, I have these in a, a new project bag. This is a project bag by Prairie Dye Works. So uh, Sue of Prairie Dye Works um, posted this Last weekend, you're gonna see there's a little bit of a theme. Um, I have, uh, I really should stay off of Instagram probably, but she posted this bag and I thought it was just so cute with the little coffee cups. So zipper pouch, I think all our bags have this nice little tape measure um, ribbon in them, which is nice. It has two nice pockets, um, it has two um, rings and I've just got some stitch markers hanging on there and this is a tip I want to say this was Kay from Crazy Sock Lady might have mentioned this. It might be somebody else. I apologize if I if I had that wrong to put my um, needle on there, which is my yarn needle, which is really convenient. Um, and then some. She always always includes um, a couple of progress keepers, um, or at least the ones I've gotten have had them on there. Um, so again, that's Prairie Dye Works, and. Also, she, had, she usually has a few cards in there. I mean, this one had, um, this is her business card. I'll, her shop is linked below and there was a few of these hand knit cards, but it's really, really kind of cool. Her card has the Kitchener stitch on it. So if that is something that you have not fully memorized, um, that's really super handy to have. So I, li I like those bags quite a lot. This is a really small, just nice little sock size. Um, one of the other, 
goals that I have um, with the sock tube um, knitting is to get my Kitchener stitch uh, a little um, better. And I'm actually pretty pleased with how this one came out. Um, it's quite invisible. My second, um, the closing up the one stitch has got a little bit of a dog ear that I'm working through, but for the most part, I have found that my, I'm feeling like those are much better. This was the heel, which of course I also had to Kitchener. And this one, I think, other than that one place right there that I got to work on the dog ear, but the, knitting, the stitching, I think, come out, came out very nicely. So, so it's just kind of a skill builder, I guess, if you will. So along with that pair, so I'm, I've gone ahead and done a few other um, sock tubes to try. So I'll do a little demo of that. So this is another um, cloud born fibers. This one is I don't have a colorway. It's just a color number 11 207. Um, these are 80% superwash, fine Highland wool, 20% polyamide, uh, fingering weight, and it's 178 yards per 50 grams. So this one I'm affectionately calling purple zebra. <laughs> Um, because I just think it purple camo zebra actually <laughs> um, I just think it came out really cool um, these are probably gonna go to my son uh, who thought the camo was quite cool and um, likely his girlfriend will wear them probably more than he does but um, so we'll be putting some um, cuffs and toes in that one this is a much longer skein of Active Super Garn, 100 grams sport weight. And that colorway is 3362. Don't think it has a name colorway. Um, and you can see the 100 gram, obviously, it's a quite, quite a bit more mileage. This was also knit on the 60 cylinder. So this will be probably a couple of pairs of socks. I'm hoping maybe shorties for my mom and my daughter and myself might be tight. Um, so more to come on that. I have not decided what um, complimentary colors. There's so many fun choices. I think the hot pink would be fun or maybe pull out that aqua a little bit. And the final sock tube that I have, actually, um, I posted, I couldn't, I, <laughs> I was trying to wait to record um, so you could see the really pretty package, but I'll put a photo up here. Um, so I participated in the Warm Feet Cal um, earlier uh, this year, um, run by uh, Lisa of the Soulful Spinner podcast. And I was a prize winner, which is Awesome. I've never won a prize in the cowl before, so that was really fun. Um, so it was a really lovely um, uh, um, skein of DreamWorks Dream and Color yarn, which is a 98% superwash merino, 2% lurex fiber. Um, and the colorway is icy pink. So there's its. I will have that information below as well. They, um, I did take a look on their website and the colors are stunning. So the, um, there's a picture uh, again that I'll pop in of the actual yarn, but this is it knitted up into a sock tube. And this is definitely one that I'm gonna either put cream accent heel toes and cuffs, or I will un, um, un ravel and knit with the yarn directly because it's just um it's it's so pretty it has the very hint i don't know if you can get any of the sparkle i don't think it's really picking it up but there's a little bit of a hint of sparkle it's like a gold very fine 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 gold stellina in there 
that may be the Lorex. I'm not, not sure about that. And um, Lisa had it in a really lovely, this is why I wanted to save it because I got a very nice card and some tea and there was some chocolates and it was in this nice um, tissue. So it was, it was very special to, to receive and um, I just thought that was really, it was fun. I wanted to, to share that part in the crinkling. So that is the end of the knitting and sort of knits in progress. Um, I did have one more, a couple of stash acquisitions, um, and then I'll talk about spinning, I think would be next. Uh, so the um, first yarn I wanted to talk about, so this is uh, a yarn that I fell in love with <laughs> looking at um, Felicity um, Yarn Studio. So there is a um, Zazoe of Felicity Yarn Studio is the dyer. Um, she also has a podcast. I, the link will be below. I encourage you to check that out. Um, so this yarn is 75% um, superwash, 25% nylon, 100 gram skeins. And this colorway is called Haystacks. And I... I hope the colors are coming through. I mean, I fell in love with it on her Etsy shop. Um, it had been, I think she posted on Instagram, so I first saw it and I went over and took a look. But when I got it in person, oh my gosh. I, I mean, if you know, so it's a, um, obviously off uh, from the Monet uh, paintings and if you know the color, that, that, those paintings, um, uh, the colors will look familiar, but just the subtlety uh, in, in the skeins of, you know, capturing, you know, the elements. And if you go in and look at the painting and then look up the yarn, I mean, she's just really captured it um, so lovely. Um, so I'm thinking this will probably end up um, in some sort of a color work yoke. Um, it was a bit of an impulse by one of those things that you see and you just think, oh, I, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but I have to have it. So, um, so take a look. She also has, I believe it's still up her advent, uh, which is based on um, Georgia O'Keeffe. Um, and if you'll see, and if you're, um, you know, an art admirer, um, at all, you'll you can you'll appreciate as you look through her the yarns in her shop. Uh, many of the colorways are based off of um, paintings, so uh, and, and artwork. Um, so I think that will be a lovely um, advent. So if you're still doing your advent shopping, I would encourage you to pop over there and and take a look. I think the colors uh, are going to be stunning, and I'm sure you're going to see some of this um, as well. Watching Nitty Natty a couple of weeks ago, I believe she had the cutest little. I think I have one on one of my, they're called end minders. I just thought I put one on one of my projects and I don't find, I don't see it hanging off here, but you know, these little ends that we always have sort of hanging off our um, knitting from where we've changed colors, etc. I don't know. I thought I had one, <laughs> but anyway, um, you, the, 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 you would wind it on this little guy and this one's a little bunny and there's some little sheep I kind of got like the variety pack wind up the yarn and that will keep that little end tidy so um, this is a little variety pack and there's a little like here's the little one of the little sheeps you can see that and some rabbits and a couple different colors. So super cute. I just, those little ends, I kind of have started crocheting that little end and that just appealed to my um, sense of wanting to tidy up a little bit. Uh, and also looking through that same shop, I picked up some little sheep progress keepers. I'm extremely fond of all things with little sheep, so. And the shop is Crafty Flutterbee Creations.
so there's information which I will also link below and um, she's had a lot of really just cute little um, knitting notion type things so I encourage you to check that out as well so I'm going to take a quick pause here and come back with some spinning <music> This past week and the upcoming week through July 18th, I believe, um, in the fiber world is um, the uh, Tour de Fleece. So this is the 2020 version um, running concurrently with the Tour de France um, bic uh, bicycle race, uh, of course. So spinning, spinning, a little bit of fun, right? Um, and while there are certainly, um, I think, uh, teams that kind of form and I've not heavily participated uh, in anything like that. I think they look for, you know, spinning mileage or, or um, you know, who can spin the most fiber or the fastest or the most gain. So a lot of different things. But everybody sort of sets their own goal is sort of the gist that I get. And for me, um, I'm not consistent in my spinning. So I have literally, my goal this year is just to spin every day consistently, even if it's 10 or 20 minutes. I'm actually finding... Um, that, you know, after work in the evening, you know, for 15, 20 minutes or actually even in the morning and I'm not a morning person, but just that little um, bit of spinning in kind of makes me mentally think, okay, I got my spinning in for the day and um, uh, it's, it's kind of a nice meditative um, either wake up or wind down. So, so I've been kind of doing that a little bit, um, which, is, which has been nice. And I'll talk a little bit about it and spinning on some Corey Dale. Uh, about that. But prior to um, that, I did finish my um, Shetland sample spin. Uh, if you'll remember back uh, in the prior episode, I talked a little bit about I was spinning up some um, fleece from Yara and Gwen of um, the um, Whispering Pines Farm. So these are 2019 uh, fleece samples I bought as raw fiber. Uh, so um, Gwen is the Morit fiber and Yara is the Fawn fiber. And um, both of them have a average fiber diameter of 23.7. So it's, it's you know, pretty fine and I was able to get my, my singles were very fine. I did this as a three ply um, just to see what it would be like. Um, uh, it's very interesting um, as this is really the first spin I've done with Shetland. It's extremely springy it, you, as you know if you've knitted with, with you know, Shetland, uh, particularly um, hand, hand spun Shetland. Um, and I probably have over well, I can tell I've overspun it. <laughs> um, I have some Instagram photos as well, but you can see it's a little kinky curly. Um, so I'm going to have to kind of work on that before I get to my larger uh, fleeces. But what I loved about this is um, I let it sort of barber pull in the middle. And so I have this kind of, a, I think it'll be a nice little gradient. Um, I forgot to look at the yardage of this before I sat down to record, so I'll, I'll get that posted when I decide what I'm going to do with it. And I have some um, some of um, Jen Johnson's hand spun too. I may don't know if I'll put them together or I'll just I've got several more sample um, packs that I'm going to to use to spin. But it was very interesting uh, after I had finished this up, I um, had gotten my <clears throat> spin-off magazine the summer 2021 version and there's a really interesting um, article in here by Elizabeth Johnston um, called spinning Shetland fine lace now I mean I would not um, at all again I'm an extremely novice spinner and I am by no means stretch the imagination spinning fine lace which is you know that wedding ring type lace right um, but it, she talks about the twist, right? It, 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 the, the article is spinning Shetland fine lace. Is it all, it's all about the twist or is it? And she talks about it not only in, um, the choice of, of a wheel, uh, the ratio of a wheel, obviously for, for fine lace, you're going to need a very, um, high amount of twist. So high ratio there, even the difference between using a bobbin lead, um, 
or wheel lead, um, spinning wheel, uh, fiber preparation. I was very, very surprised to find out. Well, no, I really wasn't surprised, but typically, um, traditionally that, uh, would be spun in the in the grease, you know, raw fiber, not having had the lanolin washed off, um, which is interesting because I did spin some of these locks. I spun this from the lock, um, and some of it I washed up, and some of it I didn't because I wanted to see. It definitely has a different kind of drag to it, um, in with the lanolin still on, and this was really clean fiber. So, um, so that's that was sort of interesting uh, information to think about. Um, and so she talked a little bit about fiber prep, um, typically spun from the lock just with a dog comb is what she said, you know, used not, not in the air, but down on the table. Um, had some very interesting samples of the, uh, you know, some preparation and, um, and then she talked about the, the twist for the single and the plying. And that was just really interesting having worked with it a little bit and is making me kind of rethink um, the, you know, when to put the twist in the single versus when to put the twist in the ply. So I'm gonna read through that article a few more times um, and, and kind of really think about that. Um, the other really interesting piece in this article is, you know, we will spin our yarn um, and, and then wash it, right? Let it have a good soak, relax. That sets some of the twist, let it hang to dry. And I, I know that I've heard different things about whether you weight yarn or not. And I believe, I always thought you did not weight yarn to dry it. But interestingly, with this Shetland lace, they actually do block that finished yarn on a, almost like a stretcher kind of thing for, uh, in, before it's knitted and then blocked again, of course, in the lace afterwards, which I, I thought was really interesting. And um, I'm going to, um, as I'm, and I'm going to talk a lot more about Shetland as I get processing that fleece, um, probably by the end of the year, you'll be tired of hearing me talk about Shetland, but I'm going to really want to do a deep dive fiber study. Um, and um, so I, I'm going to look for some additional resources. Um, one of the uh, things I'm going to look at um, uh, Jennifer um, Johnston, or excuse me, not Jennifer, that's the shepherd. Is Elizabeth Johnston, the author, um, is um, owner of Shetland Handspun and the co-author of The Warp Weighted Loom and contributed to Shetland Textiles 800 BC to present. So um, I think that's definitely someone I'm going to look for some information there and then also in the Shetland Museums and there's a, a host of other um bits of literature out there too. So um, more to come on that. I just, I thought that was a really interesting article. Um, actually, this is really great. Um, like if you don't subscribe to Spinoff and you want to just like give it a roll, run, go get this. This is a fantastic, um, had just had a lot of information on it. There's some stuff on um, uh, a lot of it. it, it the, the article, the issue is about twist and, and ply. Um, the other article that I thought was really fascinating because I, I don't know, I, I think I'm finally getting to the point where I feel like I need to be at least occasionally a little more technical in my spinning. And you'll see with this, what I'm doing right now, I'm completely not being that way. Um, and I have some courses that I want to take. I'm a member of the School of Sweet Georgia and, and um, also um, watch um, Rachel Smith on uh, woolen spinning. And um, so I'm, I'm really, I need to be more thoughtful about it. I mean, obviously the twist has a big impact in the outcome of the yarn. And um, I had gotten, I thought I was over twisting. That was my early spinning. Then I felt like I was under twisting. Now I feel like I'm back to over twisting. So I, I kind of need to like be a little more mathematical in the approach, but there's an article in here by Sahara Briscoe called uh, Twisted Love, An Artist Measures Twist and Grist. And her just, her approach in this article um, and it, it was just really interesting. I think it made it really accessible um, to at least to help me think about it. So I, I would highly recommend that article as well. And there was also some very interesting, there was a good ergonomic article by Carson um, Demers. Uh, and um, um, there was also a very interesting um, article about um, some historic um, textiles um, 
you know, far back in um, how they might have been used as even, they thought maybe even as a written language. So anyway, a really um, informative and um, packed, uh, I mean, I kind of read that one cover to cover in uh, a few hours. It was, I found it very, very interesting. So I encourage you to check that out. But for my um, tour de fleece goals, um, I really just want to spin consistently. Um, so I kind of thought, all right, I don't want to spin something that I'm kind of going to worry about and have to futz with, although I will um, add some of that in, I believe, um, having kind of gotten interested in this twist uh, article. Um, but I had an old, um, I mean, I think really old <laughs> in my stash, a uh, bag of carded uh, Corey Dale. It is a half pound, 225 grams um, that I pulled out. And um, what I had done uh, during one of my dyeing, um, uh, hand dyeing episodes, I had a, done some blue uh, yarn and had essentially used too much and needed to um, exhaust the, the dye bath. And so I'd grabbed some fiber and thrown it in. And really, it had been the first time I had dyed any um, raw, f or, yeah, well, not raw, but washed, um, car you know, carded prepped fiber. And I I'd felt it a little bit. So um, on last week's podcast, Lisa, Lisa of the Soulful Spin was, um, had highlighted some of her bulky weight spin yarns, um, singles yarn. And I thought, oh, that's really interesting. And I think actually I will explore that further with the Jacob that I'm spinning up. But I thought, you know, that semi felted <laughs> um, come top I have might be really interesting to, uh, to try that out. So um, I pulled it out. I had two bunches. There's kind of a, uh, one was a variegated that made this one and then one's the, the, the aqua that um, I've got a second batch I'm working on now. So, um, and pulled that out um, and just spun it into this kind of very chunky singles yarn, popped it in the bath, let it hang to dry. And while I was a little bit, I, um, I've got some footage that I'll, I'll insert here, kind of overlay. Um, it was a little bit of a struggle to spin because it was a little bit felted, but I sort of just really pre-attenuated it, drafted it out to about where I thought I would need it to be, um, and then just let it do its thing. So it's a little thick and thin, kind of chunky. It's got some, you know, underspun places, but because of the, I mean, it's, hopefully, hopefully this will do what I think. I mean, it's, it's, it's holding together great. Um, and let me tell you what, it just flew <laughs> off the bobbin because, that was it, no ply, especially after doing that very thin three ply Shetland. Um, this was extremely satisfying, maybe as a kind of a spinning uh, palette cleanser. So, um, so I have that aqua skein that I finished first. Um, and then I went on to, I had a little bit of a, I believe that I used Wilton, Wilton purple and kind of broke this dye in the dye pot in that. Um, and then I've got another uh, just aqua one that I've been working on now. Um, I spun all but one day this week. One day I just, work was late and we had some other stuff going on. So um, not quite 100% of my goal, but definitely I got a few, few skeins off. So, um, and then this is the, the one I'm working on now. So you can see even this, this is better than the first batch, but even this is not it's it's got a little bit of felting in it. If you were to look at the un you know undyed one, um, so I thought it might be interesting for me to just highlight a little bit about the Corydale breed, and I'm just going to take a quick excerpt from the um, Field Guide to Flea. So I have the the bigger book. Uh, this is by Deborah Robson and Carol Acarius. I'm sorry, I'm probably not pronouncing that correctly, but this is just kind of the quickie version of it. Um, so the Corydale um, is, uh, the origin is New Zealand. 
The fleeces weigh between um, 10 and 20 pounds, so really large. Staple length, three to six inches. Fiber diameter, 25 to 35 microns. And the natural colors are white, uh, gray, brown, and black. So this, I've kind of pulled this out to show you. This is about the staple length of that particular um, it's quite fluffy, so pretty, fairly, lo fairly long, stapled. I mean, it's got a little bit of attenuation in there, but basically, you can see that there. So it's it's a nice one to um, spin. It's it's pretty smooth. Um, so Cory Dale uh, were first imported by the USDA to Laramie, Wyoming research station in 1914. So it's been in the U.S. also for a long time. Um, many sheep raised on the Falkland Islands in South America are Cory Dales, and Cory Dale wool is commonly shipped from Chile through the port of Punta uh, Arenas and called Punta or PA. Um, so this is a this reliable multi-purpose wool is a pleasure to spin, knit, crochet, or weave. Its long staples and well-defined even crimp provide loft and elasticity elasticity and make it an excellent hand spinning wool. Within a single fleece, the wool tends to be consistent in length, crimp, profile, and fineness. Locks are normally rectangular and dense with flat tips. You can comb, flick, card, or spin from the locks. Cut the staples in half if you, half if you want to card fiber that is on the long side for a woolen preparation. Um, easier to spin than many wools of similar fineness. Corydale is also fairly easy to find in the yarn form. Um, it takes dye well, and the grays and the browns can be over dyed. Uh, in the best uses category, it says if you want to make sweaters, socks, pillows, blankets, and other household textiles, this medium, soft, resilient wool is ideally suited to the task. For filters, it's definitely a wool to experiment with. So. Um, just thought I would share that little bit about that with you. Um, and um, I hope would like to do more um, spinning and fiber content kind of as the, uh, as the channel grows. So that is all I have for today. I appreciate you spending some time with me and I hope I will be a little more um, regular in my uh, podcast um, publications. We've had some stuff going on at the house the last couple weeks and work's been a little busy. So sorry for the delay. Um, I would, again, love if you would um, subscribe if you're not subscribed. If you could share a little bit about the channel on your social media, that would be much appreciated. If you would leave a comment below and let me know maybe what you're working on and what you'd like as far as the content. And um, I will see you in um, two to three weeks. That's going to be my average time frame. Also invite you to follow me over on uh, Instagram at Lathe and Loom. Thanks so much, everyone. I wish you happy knitting, spinning, dyeing, and weaving.